Chapter 3 of The Pinballs by Betsy Byers Thomas J. arrived after supper. He had been living with the Benson twins so long that he yelled everything. That was the only way that he could be heard at the Bensons. The twins were almost deaf. Where do I put my things? He yelled at Mrs. Mason. Why, right back here, Thomas J. I'm putting you and Harvey in the same room so you could help him if he needs it. I'll be glad to, he yelled. He was used to helping people. If Harvey has any trouble in the night, you can call me. I'll call you. He sure got the voice for it, Carly said. Do I put my things in the drawer or just leave them in the suitcase? Carly spun around on the footstool. Will you keep your voice down? I can hardly hear the television. I'll be glad to, Thomas J. yelled. That night, the three of them sat watching the Tony Orlando and Dawn. Now this really is one of my favorite shows, Carly said as soon as it was announced. She gave each of them a long, hard look. Thomas J. nodded. Actually, he would rather have watched something else. The show brought back sad memories. It had been one of the Benson's twins' favorites. The twins had always liked anything that came in pairs. Double mint gum commercials brought them hobbling, and Dawn in their matching dresses looked like twins, even though they weren't. Sing the song, girls, Tony Orlando said, stepping back on his high-heeled shoes. Thomas J. felt awful. He could remember the twins leaning forward on their canes, trembling a little as they squinted at dawn. They had the oldest television set in Macoon County, and they had to lean close to see anything. He hoped there was a TV set at the hospital where they had been taken. They had both broken their hips on the same day. They had been coming in from the garden. Thomas J. had been right behind them, carrying a bushel basket of weeds. When one of them had slipped... She had grabbed the other for support, and they both had gone down on the path. One had broken her right hip, the other her left. It was not until they were being admitted into the hospital that Thomas J. had learned their first names. For six years, he had just called them both Aunt Benson. Their first names were Thomas and Jefferson. They had been named for their father's favorite president. That's... That was how he had gotten the name Thomas J. He had been named for them. Don't worry, Thomas J., they had told him in the emergency room when they had lain on side-by-side -side tables. We'll get over this, won't we, sister? I will. We both will, because everybody in our family has lived to be at least 90. Thomas J. had nodded. He knew their father had lived to be 96. The father would have lived longer, except that a limb fell off a tree and hit him on the head. The twins had kept the limb on the back porch for a long while, and the only time the twins had ever been angry at Thomas J. was when he, not knowing the importance of the limb, had broken it up for firewood. Andy Griffith was on television now, telling a long joke. Carly said, Why doesn't he get off? Nobody wants to listen to him. I do, Harvey said. Carly glanced at him. You would, she said. Harvey felt a twinge in his right leg. It was the worst of the breaks. The bone had gone through the skin. He looked at the back of Carly's head. He would have liked to answer her back, to insult her, but he knew that Carly could out-insult anybody he had ever met. He give me a pain, Carly said, and she glanced around the room, taking in everyone present. And he's not the only one.